Good morning and welcome. Welcome back if you're a returning viewer. Welcome if you're new here. Hi, I'm Andrea. It's Monday. It's Monday. I am not ready for a Monday. <laughs> I'm really not. But it is what it is and we just have to deal with it. So it's Monday. It is Monday morning. It's not terribly early but I did not sleep well so it feels earlier than it is because I just really wish I could have stayed in bed a little bit longer but oh well we're gonna go for a hike we're just gonna get up and get out there and do the hike for the day gonna be a gorgeous day all day to hike so there's no reason to go at a certain time and going later this afternoon won't make a difference other than that I might be even more tired <laughs> so we're gonna take what little physical energy I have and we're gonna go hiking it is an incredibly cool day today uh, like other people in Phoenix are calling this cold it's even borderline of what I would consider cold but it's still above freezing but only just it's 40. It's 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius. It's going to get up to, I think, like 49 or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Only going to get up to 10 degrees, so we're going to just crack double digits in Celsius. It's not getting that warm. It's not getting warm at all today. Like, I'm sorry, 50 or 10, that's not, that's not cold. But that's not warm either, <laughs> even for those of you up in Minnesota or in Canada, that's still not, that's still pretty cool. So it's not going to get that warm. It's not going to get warm today. It's going to stay pretty cool and it's going to stay cloudy. It's supposed to be, my, my phone says it's sunny. It is not sunny out there. It is definitely a good bit of cloud cover. I'm loving it. I am not taking it for granted. I am enjoying every moment. It is currently only 60 degrees Fahrenheit in my apartment right now. I was so snugly warm in bed. I did not want to get out of bed, but it is just amazing right now. I'm able to wear all of my cozy sweaters and all of my cozy leggings and life is fantastic. And tomorrow, walking on campus tomorrow is going to feel pretty good because it's not, it's not going to be warm. Oh, I see a little bit of sun on my couch trying, trying to peek through. So we'll see, maybe it'll get a little sunny out there for us, um, but it should still be really cool lighting um, for the hike. So settle in, get cozy, um, get yourself a cup of tea or coffee or hot chocolate, and maybe a nice snack or two. I'm just gonna go for a hike. I've got a lot of work to do, a lot of teaching work to do, and then I wanna do some writing because I didn't do any writing yesterday. So I definitely need to do a little bit more writing than what Scrivener is going to tell me I need to do. I want to do a little bit over that today to try to make up for not writing yesterday. So yeah, it's just going to be a cozy work from home day on this very chilly <laughs> Monday here in the desert. So yeah, without any further rambling, let's just go hiking.
was so cold. It stayed cloudy, like the whole hike. I've actually been able to wear my Primark hat for like the entire hike and not get overheated with it. I also had a scarf that I put on. Like this is the most bundled up I have been for any of my hikes this season. And I didn't have to take a single layer off the entire time which just shows you how cool it's been. The sun is trying to come out. There's like thinner clouds above the hut park right now, but almost the entire hike, there was just this really thick bank of clouds directly above the park. I hiked for about an hour, a little bit, little less, about 52 minutes, so just under an hour and 1.8 miles. I feel pretty good. I'm ready to go home and just have a nice relaxing day. <laughs> sitting at my desk or I know I'm going to have some grading to do and I want to try to get ahead on grading. Got some teaching work to do but some of that like the grading I can sit in my armchair pop a YouTube video on and grade that way that'll be great. So I'm just going to have a relaxing day and then I think especially given this weather I think I'm going to make a giant pot of chili but I had a lovely hike. I was doing a lot of thinking about book stuff while I was out there. It's finally starting to like click into place in my head. So this afternoon, in addition to writing, one of the things I want to do is sit down with a couple pieces of paper, like one big piece of paper, and like map out the year. I just want to start seeing the whole year at a glance. So like I've got my five-year planner, but that only lets me look at one month at a time. I need to map it out in my head on paper to see the whole year at a glance. All the months and all my projects and where everything is going to start to fall and also figure out Camp Nano in April and July and Nano in November. So I was thinking about that while I was hiking and just like in my head thinking if I'm here by this month and here by this month and if this project is at this place by this month. So I need to now take all of that out of my head and put it on paper. But I've got a lot of teaching work to do first. I also have a Whole Foods order that should be arriving between two and four because I didn't go to Whole Foods on Friday. I usually do. I went for an incredible hike instead, as you saw two vlogs ago. So yeah, that will be arriving and I need to eat something because I can feel myself getting hungry. I need to go home and take a shower <laughs> and wash my hair. My hair, I'm definitely going to have hat hair once I take this off. We'll do that off camera. But yeah, just going to go home, get all cleaned up, super cozy, get settled in and get to work. <laughs> It is four o'clock. It is four o'clock. I am done with teaching work. I got done a little bit faster than I expected, so that was good. I got a lot of grading done, but there wasn't as much to grade as I was expecting, so that made a difference. But lessons are planned out for the week, 
and everything that needs to be graded in the grade book is graded <laughs> and there's not really much left for me to do today so I'm done for the day and that feels really good the groceries have been delivered so the whole foods delivery has arrived everything has been put away so that's good and i am now finally sitting at my desk and ready to shift over to doing some book work i also need to get the chili going soon so rather than writing for 30 minutes and then stopping i figured i would do my planning session first and just plan for like 30 minutes get it at least started so that I can keep thinking about things um, but I really want I don't I know it won't take long to get what's in my head down on paper so <laughs> I just need to get working on that so as I was kind of saying in my car earlier I'm just shifting how I'm shifting my approach to publishing this year I'm just trying to take a more relaxed, no pressure approach to it. And I feel like when you first, when you first get into self-publishing and being an indie author and you do that deep dive down YouTube and the Facebook groups and all of that, and you find people who are further along in their publishing journeys and have more experience and more books under their belt and all of that. There's just so much amazing advice that you can get. And sometimes it's a little easy, I think, to lose perspective and think that some of these people who are giving this advice have been doing it for like a decade or more. <laughs> Like one of my favorite authors, indie authors, who's one of the reasons I got into being an indie author because I was reading her books and just could not read them fast enough and could not download the next one fast enough and was anxiously awaiting the next release in one of her series and then realized that she actually wasn't traditionally published. And I'm like, oh, like... That it made me start looking at the other books that I was reading in a similar fashion and realized, oh, these people are not traditionally published either. Like, these are also indie authors. Like, it's easy to compare myself to these people, but then I have to stop and think, well, this author in particular, she's been doing it for about 10 years now. I think some of her early books were from, like, 2013. I'd have to go back and check. Like, even someone who's been doing this for five years has an advantage on me. I've only been doing this for three, like I was getting into it in 2019, but I didn't publish until the very end of 2019. So it's kind of been all of 2020, all of 2021, all of 2022, and now we're at the beginning of 2023. So it's been about three-ish years since I published, started publishing. And I just feel like even though some people outside of the indie community will look at what I've done and think, three years, six books, like you're, you're, you're an expert now. You're so experienced. It's like, I'm still in the infancy of my publishing career. Like I'm still just a baby, baby in the author as far as I'm concerned. And I still have so much to learn so much that, you know, just, I, I know I need to do differently, but I'm also still working a full-time job and starting trying to start my coaching business and like I'm doing a lot of different things and so it's not as easy as just writing another book and publishing and then writing another book and publishing that and then writing another book and then publishing that. I feel like I've started falling, potentially falling into the trap of just writing to publish and like someone commented on a couple of videos ago that they find that my content is refreshing and different from other author tuber content and other authors on YouTube, which is a huge compliment. And I really, really appreciate that because I am trying, not trying to be different, but I am in showing my path and my journey. I know I'm not following the same path. I don't, I'm not trying to be, and I see, I see my analytics. I know who a lot of you all are also subscribed to. 
I know how some of you are finding me. I know similar channels to mine that you're subscribed to, and it is kind of flattering to be, as far as YouTube is concerned, to be put into the category of some of those author tubers. So I have an idea what other author channels some of you are following, those who are following me for the writing and the author content. I know what other author tubers you all are subscribed to, and A, I'm flattered, but B, I also know that my approach is very different than them. And so if you want to learn how to be a top selling indie author, if you want to know how to manage the business side of it, if you want to learn more about book marketing, if you want to learn how to become a six figure author, this is not the channel for you. I'm just going to put that out there because <laughs> like I'm looking for those channels. I mean, I'm I'm slowly want like that's the direction I want to go in, but like that's not where I'm at yet. I feel like if you want content on just writing a book and if you want cozy aesthetic writing B-roll and if you want to follow another baby indie author who is still in the early stages of her journey, then this is the channel for you. I know that a lot of you are either similar stage as I am, you know, first few years, first, you know, still under a dozen titles to your name. You're curious and wanting to grow, but you're still f navigating and figuring out like KDP, you know, KDP exclusive versus going wide. And, you know, you're still in the midst of everything you get thrown when you're first starting out. So you're either in that camp, with me where you are published but you're, you're still you're, you're still new to everything or you're an aspiring author who is not yet published but is actively writing and editing and working on character development and figuring out you know improving your craft and things like that and that's the kind of content that I'm interested in I really want this channel to be like as far as the writing content I really want this channel to be a space where it's not about how much how many books we're selling it's not about how much money we're making off of our books because I'm I'm already losing that game I'm not selling that many books and I'm not making that much money I'm not paying any bills <laughs> with my books yet that's a dream for down the road but that that's not the reality you know I haven't shared any of my sales stats but just for an example there are some months like a launch month where I do quite well there are other months where I make like 10 bucks I, I, I'm paying my Netflix bill those months with my royalties not much else but I'm still profoundly grateful for the two or three books that gets me that 10 bucks so I, I'm not taking any of my sales for granted and I'm still appreciative for all of them. I'm not looking at them like, I wish I was making more. Like, I'm happy with my sales. For where I'm at and for the amount of time and money I'm spending on marketing, aka very little time and no money, I'm happy with the sales that I'm getting considering I'm really only posting on Instagram and talking about them on YouTube. That's, the, that, that's my marketing that's my marketing. So that I sell any books at all is pretty good. And so, and I know, I know most of my sales come from you lovely people. And so I don't take any of, any of this, I don't take any of it for granted. I'm at a point where I'm realizing that if I want to sustain my writing career, if I want to be able to maintain a sustainable writing career, I can't be focused on the end product or the sales. I have to be focused on the process, the writing and publishing process and enjoying that process as much as possible. Because as soon as you stop enjoying something, you don't wanna do it. Especially if you're not getting some sort of return on that time. So I still make three videos a week because I really love making YouTube videos, not because I make a ton of money off of YouTube, because I don't. If I was into any of this for the money, I would have quit by now, because, yeah. So my approach to publishing this year, I have two books that I'm pretty sure I can publish, and then I've got Rural Romance, which needs some work, but 
we'll see what happens. It might also get published this year. Three books in one year would be amazing, but I have yet to have published three books in one year. And it's laughable to me that I once thought I could do four books in a year. I don't know what that Andrea was thinking. I'm kind of wanting to scale back and just acknowledge that I am still in the early stages of my writing career. I am still balancing a full-time job and trying to start a coaching business on top of my books. And I would rather enjoy my books and publish fewer books in a year than rush through everything to get, you know, two books or three books published this year, but then not be able to enjoy any of it. And I feel like last year, I wasn't enjoying Brave Together back in April as much as I would have liked because it had gotten delayed. I was still very much in my head. There was a lot that was stressing me out. And so I just wasn't able to enjoy that launch as much as I wanted. And then when I didn't, you know, when it didn't immediately go, you know, to the top 10 of Kindle sales, it just, I felt really bad about it. You know, when the launch didn't go the wildest dream scenario, it was hard to not be disappointed. Whereas I feel like by the end of Hopes and Dreams, I did let myself enjoy more of that process. I was slower and more intentional with it. I felt really good about it. And I had low expectations as far as the launch and the sales. And I just wanted to focus on whatever positives came out of it. And I feel like I enjoyed that book a lot more. And so I'm slowly learning how to slow down and enjoy publishing more. Yeah, so that's kind of my mental approach to publishing. We're just gonna slow things down and focus on the process and focus on enjoying the outlining, the writing, the editing, the copy editing, the formatting, the proofreading, the cover design. Focus on enjoying every step of the process. And when a book is finally ready, then I will launch it. So I'm gonna be planning out the rest of this year with some very loose goals for how long I think I wanna spend on each step and see where that puts me as far as a potential launch day. But nothing is written in stone. Everything can be revised. I mostly just wanna see where I'm potentially going to be in each of my projects in each month throughout the year so that I can also then figure out what my projects for Camp Nano in April and July and for NaNoWriMo in November might be. Because right now I have no idea what I'm going to be working on in November. And that could still change by November, but I'd like to have a rough idea of like what I'm aiming for, even if launch dates end up getting moved around or something. So I'm gonna get planning and then in about 15, 20 minutes, hopefully I'll be done with what I wanna do here. And then we can go get some chili starting to cook on the stove and then get to writing. on the stove. I'll get up in a few minutes probably to turn it down but I need it to come back up to a simmer and now I'm sitting down to write. It is five o'clock. I should still have enough time to get my writing done before it's time to stop for dinner and I've got my the beginning 
of my plan done. So we've got all the color codes. So pink is across the pond, purple is Royal Romance, orange is Independent Hearts, blue is marketing. I know I wanna spend the summer, basically summer break, doing some marketing things. I feel like between now and May, I'm just doing the best I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting any pressure on myself, particularly since January is already pretty much done. I'm not putting any pressure on myself for the next few months before the end of the semester. Oh, I should have on here. I'm going to put on the very bottom line green for the semester. So we've got teaching. I do have, I had an extra column left over. So I've got January of 24. So we've now added teaching stuff to the bottom. We've at least mapped out spring semester. Pretty much everything after August, I've left really open. Bookshelf Possibilities came out in September and End of Hopes and Dreams came out in October. So I kind of feel like I want to keep that series to September or October. And then I could release Across the Pond 4 in like November, December. I want to have at least a full month, off, like not off, but a full month of no launches in between launches, if that makes sense. So like September and November or October and December or even September and December, we'll see. So I'm kind of leaving both of those. My hope is that I can make good use of the summer and get both of those books nearly ready to launch by August. The wild card in all of this is Royal Romance, and I'm not rushing that one. I am gonna try to make a push over the summer, even if I'm still working on edits. By the end of the summer, I want to have, so I should write this down. By the end of the summer, I really wanna have the same thing as the other two books. The cover, the title, the tagline, the book description, the keywords, everything I would fill in for the upload page, get all of that sorted out so that I know I won't have that one copy edited and formatted and all of that. I think it's going to, I think it's going to take me longer to edit that one. I just want to feel like I've done that one right. I don't want to feel like I rushed through it. Um, it's a whole new series. Book one sets the tone. I'm I'm not going to be a perfectionist about it, but I do want to make sure I'm doing it right. But I can take advantage of summer break to get the cover and all of that sorted out, which means I could potentially be designing three book covers this summer. <laughs> Across the Pond and Independent Hearts will be easy. They won't be any more difficult than the previous covers. It's just going to take time. I think my goal for Royal Romance is to have the developmental edits done by the end of the summer and then be starting copy editing like when the semester starts and then maybe that could be a January launch. So maybe we do September, November, January. That could work. Or October, December, February could also work. So we'll see. I'm leaving, like I said, I'm leaving the second, like the last bit of the chart blank and I will fill in the rest probably sometime in the summer once I see where I'm at. But I do feel like I kind of know where I'm aiming for. I think for Camp Nano in April, I'll be in the middle of writing the first draft of of Independent Hearts 3. So I'm for now, I've set a goal of 30K for the first draft for Independent Hearts 3 during April Camp Nano. Depending on where I'm at in July, if I am up to formatting and proofreading in Across the Pond 4, I could start working on Across the Pond 5 for Camp Nano in July. And Camp in July is kind of when I want that could actually work out. Camp is in July is when I'm kind of wanting to like really go big, go big or go home. I think I'm gonna have a much more scaled back NaNoWriMo in November. I don't think I'm gonna aim for 50K in November, but I might aim for 50K in July. 
And then I could either keep writing it and do something completely different in November or start outlining um, and writing book four of Independent Hearts in November. Or I could just put in the, put Across the Pond five on pause and pick it back up in November, depending on where I'm at with the other projects and with launches and all of that. That's kind of where we're at as far as publishing. I've got some goals. I've got some things I'm working towards, but everything is flexible. Everything is negotiable. <laughs> I'm not going to stress myself out over any of this because it is just not worth it. So I'm going to find a place to put this maybe on one of my boards back here. Um, I've tried to do a Kanban board. I love the idea. Sarah Cannon makes it look so fantastic. I can never keep up with it. My planning happens in my planner. I just, I can't, it doesn't work for me. I think this might just get stuck up on one of these boards back here so that it's there and I can see it. But for now, I'm just gonna set it to the side. I'm gonna move all of my highlighters and get those out of the way. I've got a little bit of cider in a fancy glass left over from the chili. I didn't use the whole bottle in the chili pot. I'm gonna get my external monitor plugged in and we're gonna get writing because we've got 1,217 words that I need to write today if I'm going to stick to my deadline. closed the laptop. I need to go plug it in. I'm done writing and apparently I wrote for an hour and eight minutes because I put on a London walking video and it is just ending and I'm like oh I started watching this when this started. Let me see how long the video was. An hour and eight minutes. I got to 1342 words today so not as many as I was hoping. I was, I was hoping I'd get like at least to 15, but I'm done. It's 6.30. My brain is melting. <laughs> the chili is smelling amazing and I just want to sit down and eat dinner and relax. What are we at overall? I didn't write that down. We are, as far as the manuscript is concerned, we're at 78,201. So we're doing pretty good. My goal for the day was 1,217 and I did 1,342. So that's great as well. And I'm feeling good about it. I'm enjoying it and that's the whole, like I was saying earlier, that is the whole purpose of my writing this year. I would rather only publish one book this year. I know I can definitely publish at least one of these books, probably even two. I think I can get both Across the Pond and Independent Hearts out by the end of this year. Part of me did want to have something come out in the first half of this year. Like going forward, I would like to have like something come out 
in the like late spring and something come out in the late autumn early winter each year like if I'm doing two books a year I would like them spaced out by at least four months but I don't know that that's gonna happen this year I think I can get at least one if not two books out this year but it's not gonna be until the latter part of the year so if anyone was waiting for a book from me early this year I'm sorry you're gonna have to wait until the end of the year but hopefully it'll be worth the wait and I'm just realizing as I get further into this whole self-publishing malarkey that it is better for me and more enjoyable if I'm focusing on the process and enjoying the process and not racing and rushing to keep up with arbitrary deadlines that I set myself just because I'm trying to follow an example or compete with other more established authors who this is their full-time job. I want to enjoy these books. I don't want these books to end up feeling like they've got negative energy attached to them because I'm so stressed throughout the whole process. So I want you to feel the positive energy that I have while writing them as you're reading them. I am not gonna go have my chili for dinner and figure something out to watch for on TV and just have a relaxing evening. It has been such a good day. I'm still thinking about the hike. It was just such a lovely hike this morning. It never really got fully sunny and then it got really cloudy. The clouds definitely came back over it. I think it was raining in some parts, but it definitely got cloudy and dreary. It's felt very dark and moody in here all afternoon, which I absolutely love. It snowed in Sierra Vista. Someone, um, Amy, commented on a video that you had gotten some snow flurries, and my sister, who lives in Sierra Vista, sent a video through to the family chat of the snow. It's just a very light dusting on the ground. There's definitely snow. <laughs> so jealous. So yeah, that was exciting. And it, it's just, it has felt really cool here. I don't think it got above 48 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been very, very cool all day. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not subscribed, all of that great stuff. I would really appreciate it. Say hi in the comments. Let me know how you're doing. You can put some cloud emojis in the comments if you want to let me know which one of you lovely people have made it all the way to the end of this vlog. And our question of the vlog, I guess thinking about the plans, like if you are an author, what are your writing and or publishing plans for the year? I feel like a lot of people I follow have been doing like my publishing plans for 2023 and I intended on doing a video like that and then the more I thought about it the more I'm like yeah my plans are to just to take a really relaxed approach and I'll publish when I publish which doesn't really make its own video if that makes sense. So um, but I'd love to know if you have more detailed plans, um, what are your plans, or if you're writing and not publishing, what are your writing plans, um, what are you hoping to accomplish this year. Um, if you're not a writer, I'd love to know just what do you, what are your plans for the year, or do you have specific plans for like the, you know, the four quarters of the year, are you doing anything at work that you've got a plan long term for, or something like that. So let's just chat plans for the year or our anti-plans of the year, whatever the case may be. I'd love to chat all of that with you in the comments. And yeah, I'm now going to go have my chili and have a lovely cozy evening. And I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye! Bye.